Welcome everyone to the 25th episode of Curve the Cube. And Curve the Cube is aimed at inspiring you to pursue your dreams. Go for it. Live outside the cubicle and, uh, you know, make your life count, man. You only get one chance. So anyway, uh, on this episode, we have Jason Florent, who is an incredible, incredible young Haitian artist just completely exploding onto the scene. And I've known him for years, and I, I remember seeing when he was just getting started, and the first thing he did that really captured my attention was uh, this sketch he did following the earthquake in Haiti, which was just heart-wrenching and really expressive of everything that we all were feeling as a community. And uh, that was the first thing that really caught my eye, and it, it actually was around the time that he was really finding himself as an artist and, and exploring that. And it's really amazing that this is so timely because of the tragedy, of course, that just happened in Nepal and that just brought back everything that happened with Haiti. So um, we didn't know at the time that we recorded that that, that, that was happening, going to happen, but it was just the timing of it is just a little bit mind-boggling for me. But but this this podcast, Jason, is, is incredible. He talks about how he's really put one foot in front of the other and um, he's overcome some incredible odds because you know around him growing up you didn't really necessarily see a bunch of young kids trying to be artists that wasn't really what, what was done so um, he's really you know going after life and his passion and living it every day and doing amazing things with it to be able to actually literally live as an artist which is just awesome so if you are aspiring to be an artist figuring out how you can make it go um this podcast for you and it's actually sponsored by soul experiences so you go to soul experiences you can find them on facebook or um twitter and soul is just but s-o-l there's no you it's soul like the sun and if you mention flintstone media or you mention curve the cube on any of their events you're going to get a discount so head out there they are really doing amazing things for so people socialized in South Florida and making sure every day you can have some fun. So check out their events. They do pub crawls, trips to Key West, all kinds of fun stuff. And mention us, you'll get a discount. So anyways, sit down, buckle up, and just enjoy the ride with Jason Florent, also known as Jaffle, an incredible, incredible artist. Bye-bye. Enjoy. Curve the Cube will now initiate. The big canvas should have been my clue. <laughs> Hi. How are you doing? Oh, you jumped up here. Hi. How are you? How are you? How are you? Man, it's been like centuries. I know, so long. Yeah, right? How's everything going? Everything's kosher. Yeah. 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 Great. Yeah. Great. Lot twenty-three. Yeah. What is Lot 23? Lot 23 is an artist residency in West Palm Beach. Everyone who lives here is a different form of an artist. No kidding. Yeah. Like you gotta, oh, that is awesome. Yeah. Like what kind of uh, people? Well, you got Ryan who does um, singing, teaches singing and dancing. Oh, cool. Liz, she's um, another painter and does graphic designs. Will and Ivan are b-boys and Will DJs. Like he DJed our um, community barbecue like, yesterday. No kidding. Yeah. yeah. No Over kidding. There, you got a bossy who does drumming. Yoga, uh, a bossy. Rap. I think I know. He does the drum circles or yep. something, right? Yeah, he I know him from Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I keep telling him I'm coming and I never, I'm never able to come. <laughs> it's always yeah. on the night I have my son or something. Of, uh, plot thickens. Oh. Yeah. So. That's yeah. so funny. That's yeah. so funny. <laughs> well, that's a cool. This must be fraught with inspiration. I'm sure. Yeah. So the least. Yeah. 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 Nice. All right. Nice. Oh. So where should we? Uh, oh. Come yeah. on in. Oh, oh thank you. Oh, sign the door? Oh, that is so neat. Yes, please. That is... I, what an honor. I get to sign your door. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, let's Don't see. Don't be intimidated. Bye. No, no, no. I'm just trying to think. Uh, uh, okay. Let's see. Um, I'm going to write B-U curve your cube. Boom. Uh, Jimmy. What? We like anything that starts with B because we're part of the B. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. It must be divinely inspired. Well, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. Yay, I just walked into your world and it feels nice. <laughs> it feels so nice. 
Okay, where should, are we just going to sit on the couch? Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. I'm going to put this one here and this one here. Oh, multitask. Well, I always have, I want to have a backup. I, this was my original one, then my friend Scotty just dropped this like big bad mamma jamma one on me. Yeah. And I'm like so happy for it. So I have, <laughs> I have these, that one now, and the other one is a backup. Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, yeah. Welcome. Just looking around <laughs> at your stuff. So do you live alone by yourself in this no, unit, no, or are you a My sister lives with me. She's not my actual sister, but she might as well be. Yeah, like yeah, Jessica, yeah. She's a dancer, poet, playwright. She just did a play at the Mozart Theater. No oh, kidding. Place, yeah, Pleasant City. No kidding. Yeah. I know all about the Mozart Theater. I, <laughs> I had, my that. screen debut was there. Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> A little film called Clowns Have Murderous Ways. Oh, and that's, uh, that sounds uh, it was it's like a comedic horror film. And uh, it was fun. It was a lot of my friend Jason made it and it was yeah. a lot of fun and that's where he did the screening. So yeah. that's it's a so nice theater over there. I love it, yeah. I got I was like displayed in the lobby over there, I think it's the second time. But really? Yeah, so it was this big sucker was there. Oh, <laughs> and what is this one? I'll have to I have to make Put a couple images up when I do this, but yeah, what is this one? This one's um, Oshun, the Orisha of Love. It's like the black guys, and she's like the god of love. Uh -huh. So I, I like took a mixture of a couple of girls that I, you know, oh, yes. Yeah, Are some age. inspiring yeah, uh, females yeah. in your life? Yeah, for their facial features <laughs> and, you know. <laughs> and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> and, so, uh, and that happens, and yeah, so. Oh. Usually it's in um, Jessica's room. It's basically her piece in a sense. Cause she like she'll kill people like ah oh, it's mine yeah yeah, but, um, yeah I had um we had I just did um the Jason Taylor Foundation exhibit so I had some pieces there so we were shuffling things around a little so this ended up out here for the time being so that's amazing that's amazing I mean I've known you gosh we well, knew each other right. like what was that maybe uh, like around 2010 ish yeah. Yeah. nine ten something like that yeah before I started so like probably. Nine. Yeah, well, okay, because because it was the poetry scene and the and the um, spoken word scene, yeah. and we were both kind of come happen to be there, yeah, yeah all the time. <laughs> it's the thing to do on Wednesday night. Why not? And yeah, like, and then um, so when we became friends on Facebook through that, and yeah. then. Um, you know, when the earthquake happened in Haiti, and just to introduce you, you're a Haitian artist, and I've been a fan of yours forever. <laughs> so when the um, earthquake happened in, in Haiti, I remember um, that drawing you did of this this guy screaming. Uh, was, it was a self. I, yeah, yeah, tell, yeah, tell them about that. It was, um, yeah, um, I think I still have it somewhere. I do um, believe you promised it to me, but that's, yeah, you know. So. <laughs> That's probably why I still have it. Like, I have to hunt it down and like I, I somewhere. But, yeah, you're right. It was a self portrait of um like I was like in the mirror and I was yelling. And, yeah. And like I I recent years learned that I'm kind of okay with taking pictures. Mm -hmm. But I like I liked how that image looked and I just redrew it and it it fit. Yeah. How I felt. It, it fit. So, it was striking. It, I mean it it affected me. Yeah. To the point where I remember I think I remember saying, can I, you know, put this out there and yeah. share it, and, you know, my, my parents loved it, and it, 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 I think it helped in some way. It's, it's still weird, like, um, learning, I, I know particularly then, the people's reaction to the art, like, for it to be kind mm -hmm. of like, um, a healing thing, mm -hmm. it was weird for me, definitely then, because I was like, this is just something that I drew, okay, mm. but now more than ever, I, I see it more often, I see the direct effects, and it's like, yeah, it's it's still weird. Yeah, but it's like I get it now. So yeah. it's like, oh, so I get when like when I did it, it wasn't just me relieving just my stress, but in a way, I was being a voice for other people as well. Exactly what it was. You you it it showed um this feeling this mixture of frustration and anger, and that some there's that something unspeakable that in moments like that you you yeah. can't express it, but you know when. When I saw what you did, I was like, that's it. That's exactly how I feel. You know, it was like, it was like a sense of, of pride and where we came from, but at the same time, just, just a heartbreak. Just absolute heartbreak. I appreciate it. That's not, like, yeah, I guess, and, you know, at that time when I did it, I, clearly that wasn't my objective. I just wanted to you know, let it out. Yeah. But now that I understand, like, that's the kind of art that I want to make. Yeah. To hear stories like that, it, it means a lot because it means, like, even then, I was doing what I was supposed to do. I mean, I'm tearing up right now thinking yeah. about how I felt in that moment. It was, it was really 
I, I'm telling you, it affected me. And so to see, you know, to watch your career and what you're doing over the last years, I can tell, I'm not surprised at all at, at some of the things that you've been able to do and everything. And, um, so you're going to make me have to throw shades on so you don't see <laughs> Like, where am I? I'm going to put my shades on because like, you're chilling up over there. Like, hey, uh, nigga, it's kind of hard for me. I'm but, so sorry. Like, I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's, like I said, I still can't. Someone's a little sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, being an artist, you're supposed to be. So, you know. It's true, right? Artists wear their hearts on yeah. their sleeves and nah, everything. I, just, I thought, no, that was, it was, like, it's still, it's kind of jarring for me because it's like, wow, to, you know, just to see people's raw real emotions mm -hmm. and to see it's tied to something that you you know like it's just you're expressing you're just yeah. expressing yourself and so it's like it's just wow yeah to know that you you can affect somebody no so you, i truly appreciate your tears oh you get the feels and it causes me to get the feels <laughs> <laughs> the feels is all over Woo! that's what art's about it's about the feels <laughs> oh, and it's so good so good um and i know I was, you know, of course I Googled you and so I know you, but I know I Googled you and looked up some more stuff and of course you sent me some really great information, but one thing I thought was interesting that you said, um... I didn't do it. <laughs> okay, next question. Sometimes, um, sometimes you have to, you don't know what, what come up with Google, so you like... I know, right? Uh, I don't, uh, I think like, I have no recollection of the events yeah, in question. Let's go through that out real quick. <laughs> No, no, I promise. Safe, this is safe thing. Um, uh, you I'm said right. that you're an artist dreaming out loud. Yeah. What did you mean? Uh, I mean, I feel like I just I think with art, to be an artist, like fully accept being an artist, it is like living a dream. Because reality tells you, the reality is you go to work to nine to five. Mm -hmm. uh, you work to work to make somebody else um, rich, yeah. but you barely make it, and that's what it is. And hopefully, you get the light fence and the dog in the yard and all that so for anybody who decides that they're going to go against that and be like nah I'm going to be an artist I'm going to make art mm -hmm. be creative you have to literally be in a constant dream state mm -hmm. and say like reality is not my reality no the way I shape reality is reality mm -hmm. so if I feel like I can survive as an artist mm -hmm. that is not reality mm -hmm. like um, if I want to make a painting it's reality because I I went and did it. Okay, it's yeah. not reality. The, the visions in my head is now here. So it's like you have to consistently live in this mindset that the real world is not the real world. Okay. So yeah, because like and then with that you get to, you start seeing things happen. Like mm -hmm. particularly for me, the like little bits of success that I've had. It's like stuff that's like I'm not supposed to be here, mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm. Statistically speaking. What was the first that time that happened that you thought oh, you thought that? It was um. I think I was at the Paul Fisher Gallery. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was, this was like this year too. It was like it's the first time he's one of my mentors, and it was the first time I was actually exhibiting in it. No, it was early last year, and uh, I, I actually was. It was after I'm jumbling this. That's story. okay. I, I figured the exact moment I got it. It, <laughs> it was the craziest moment after ever. Like so, um, Continuum is a thing that happens every year now. Here, mm -hmm. it's kind of like our art basil. It's the one that's spelled with two U's. Yeah. Okay. So the first one happened. And it was like the rap party of that. And so it was at Paul Fisher's gallery that we had the little rap party. And I, the Art Our Hive magazine had just released this article that had me in the feature of me. You were in Art Hive? Yeah, I was in the Shut thing. up! How did I not know that? Uh, you know. I want them on this podcast. <laughs> Art Hive ladies, Shut Angela. Angela <laughs> Jesse. You guys need to be I love all of those bees. <laughs> They were my bees. I loved them to death. <laughs> but, but yeah, they did this write up. And it was like one of the dopest write ups. I, that whole wow. year was crazy because it's like the year prior, I had um, just found out about Art High. And me and my friend Dahlia were at an art show and we seen the magazine and I kind of stole one. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Are they free? I, I, you know, it was, it's well, when you steal them. <laughs> <laughs> I tried not to incriminate myself too much. But yeah. I feel like since I was in they it, were now, that I day. Just went, yeah, they it were was that kinda day. in that moment and I just incriminated Dahlia too, my bad. Whoops. But uh Whoops. I am not go there, you gotta go there with me. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, the year prior, right? So we ran to it. I was you like, need a visitor. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. But I I, I want I seen it and I was like, I wanna be in it. Mm. And um 
And I guess the thing with that dreaming out loud thing, so like, I want to be in this. Mm-hmm. Thing. But fast forward a year later, I'm in it, and um, all the images that are in there are like images that I took in with my phone, cell phone, and there's a picture that they added of my father, and he had just passed the year before. <gasps> So it's like this article happens. And it's like oh. the cover of it. It's um the bridal issue cover that they have. They usually have whatever they're posted up somewhere. They got that big bride stamp and it says on there who's J Clo. <gasps> <laughs> no yeah, kidding. So everywhere they go, it's always there. So it's like so I'm looking at this oh, huge wow. thing, right? And we walk into the after party, mm-hmm. which is at Paul's place, and I see a couple of those, and I'm like, this is surreal. <laughs> it gets crazier though. We're going up through these stairs to get into the next room. And in this room, he has like paintings by Crash, Andy Warhol, all hanging, right? Wow. And there's a painting by me. Shut your face. Stop it. <laughs> Kitchen with, by the way, Stop on the it. table, like those magazines are spread on the floor. And I'm just like, Stop it. I did not leave that room the entire night. Stop it. I kid you not. <laughs> I kid oh you not. my gosh, that's yeah. amazing. I, yeah, I kid I was like, so you just want to tell me that? <laughs> it's like, nah, that's just, you're going to just let me walk into all right, Oh but, my but, gosh. Shout out to Paul. But yeah, that's uh, amazing. That was that I'm not supposed to even be here. Before. What did like, that do I, to you? Uh, it made it sent chills. But like, uh. I don't, like it was like because prior to that, I had there was moments, and I keep forgetting a lot of them where like things like the Times Square thing or BuzzFeed being mentioned and that stuff like that. But that moment would be like, so you, Paul is somebody who, like when I first started, took mm-hmm. like I had. Naive, being naive, I just randomly called him on a yellow book and was like, hey, you want to um, look at my art to see if you like it or not? Not knowing that he's You like, really just called him on the... Okay, stop look, it. I kid you not. Look. <laughs> I'm like, like 2010. You know me in 2010. I don't know no better. Like, <laughs> I didn't know no better. I was like, yeah. But it worked for you, apparently. It, it worked very well. Because the <laughs> funny thing was he wasn't even in the country. He's like, like I'm in Russia right now. And, uh, no kidding. Like, I don't know if he was drunk or something. Sorry, Bob. But like, he was like, you know what? Uh, just go ahead and send me an email on some of your stuff. So I'm like, okay. And like, I had just like lost my job. And um, I was oh living out my, my car for a little God. bit. Yeah. So it's like, I was like, yeah. Cause it's early on doing art. I'm like, maybe I'm not supposed to do this. Well, all right, I'm gonna take this risk. I'm gonna call galleries. If somebody likes it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It. So I call Paul and I send him an email. He emails me back. It's like I'll be back in town this day and I'll come by the gallery. I'm like, oh, okay. oh my and gosh. Yeah, the rest is kind of like history. It's like, all right. <laughs> it's just wow. Like battery. So for it to fast forward five years, four years later, and it be in his gallery, and for it to be like that to me is like, yeah, like I, it's. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, whoa, this you, is a real moment. You know, I vaguely remember you telling me a story a long time ago. Yeah. Um, and because I, I think I ran into you like a, within a day or two after it happening, and something happened where you were like broken down on the side of the road. Yeah. <laughs> something, and, and someone that just like the right person came along. What was that? That story? You know, the, and I'm just honestly telling you, like, honestly, like within the last couple of months, I kind of am starting to think that. That might have been Paul. <laughs> so oh, really? This is, and this is what, so like, it was literally uh, the year anniversary of that um, the third place in Haiti because mm-hmm. I was at Lynn University for the um, We Celebrate. Um, mm-hmm. you know, so I remember that because they had a, a group of people there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I was displaying artwork there. Mm-hmm. And um, so I'm on my way back so I'm trying to get to the stage because everything comes back to the stage because, you know, mm-hmm. that same night. Mm-hmm. And um, my car, like, literally, by the time I literally hit Palm Lakes, my car just... Died. Died. I probably heard it that night at the stage. Yeah, okay. I made it. That, I made it. And <laughs> yeah. I performed for the first time ever that same <laughs> night. So I was like, oh, I'm just feeling that I'm going to bust my chair. And like, I had to ask him the story and see if it registers. I'm pretty confident it was him that I think about it. Yeah. Because like, so I get stuck and it's like in the middle of the night. I'm like, all right, so no one's going to help me. And this dude randomly comes out of nowhere, skinny white guy. And he like just helps me push the car off the oh side. Oh my God. And I remember giving him like a painting and he was telling me about being, um, being mentored by Dale Chewy, and I'm like, okay, and then he registers, but it doesn't register. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Looking now, I'm like, Paul Fisher's mentor is. It could have you know, been. Yeah, you know, I'm like, something. I, I'm. Oh, yeah, I'm right? gonna ask I you. Because this could be a fluke, but it's like. Right, 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 right. right. I, I don't know. And it's like, it'd be funny. This Chewy guy could have, you know, mentees running all over Palm Beach County. Yeah, you know? I, 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 you know, I, you know so, I, but yeah, so. 
Wow. <laughs> it's funny that you brought that back up because I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, I, Yeah, it just came to my mind yeah. a couple yeah, days ago. Absolutely. I was like, Ah, huh, yeah, I remember something like that. Oh, yeah, so Paul, if you end up listening, <laughs> you hear it, like, confirm or not. Like, yeah, I have. It's all time been monitoring your career. I mean, wow. Ah. Right? Actually, I destroyed your Let me show you my moment, puppet right? strings. <laughs> 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 we'll find out you're the Sith Lord or something. Like. Sith Lord? <laughs> what do you do in your spare time when you're not painting? Uh, just be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like, that no. comes naturally, yeah, I right. think. Uh, it's good question. I, uh, like, uh, I find myself, it sounds weird, like, typical artist for you to say. I find myself meditating. Do you really? Yeah, my sister put me on to the whole meditating oh, thing. Yeah, so. Does that help you key in with your art? Yeah, it, it more so helps me just key in with life in general because, like, the whole perspective thing. Like, doing that has taught me perspective. Like, mm. I look, I stargaze a lot. Mm. And so now it's like everything, I don't freak out too much about situations because I sit there and I think about the fact that all, like, Everything that we know exists on, on, on a right. pale blue oh, dot. Yeah, so I go back to that Jason. Everything. Let me tell you when you posted that the other day. Yeah. I'm um I'm the communications manager for uh, the unplugged service at my church, yeah. and so I'm always on the lookout for things that can help move people, things that you find in everyday life. And so when you posted that, and I was looking for something, um, I, I just I wanted to talk about peace. I wanted to put something out there about peace. And literally, your that video just popped up. I'm like, that's it, pale blue. That was it. I shot it over to my priest. I'm like, can I put? She's like, yes. I love it. <laughs> I love how things work like that. Yeah. So thank really you for that. Wow, thank, you. <laughs> <laughs> like, thank you for that. Making me feel weird for posting. Like, it was that. great. Yeah. Like, yeah so awesome. like, uh, your curious are like, um, you'll understand my mindset if you yeah, watch this. So like, yeah. It's everything. It's like <laughs> Excuse for me. Fish, right? Fish. If you put a fish in a fish bowl. Its entire existence, anything it knows, is in that boat. Like, so <coughs> it have right. problems, like it might not have food that day. It's just that boat, but there's this whole world that exists beyond it. Right. So, realistically, you're looking at its problems like it ain't that serious. Mm -hmm. So, I look thinking, at my son when he's whining sometimes. It's yeah, not like, that serious. It's not that serious. But <laughs> him, to him, it's everything. That's because that's the only world. You know, and yeah. then you look back to when you were a teenager. Uh, yeah. And you think about how stupid you were. Yeah. It's yeah. just like you were so naive. Yeah. Everything so, that mattered was that boy in class or, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. It was gonna but, have to so we have yeah. a whole entire earth, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where realistically, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So it's like, why am I stressing over these little things when I live in a world where the universe works for you. It's not designed to work against you. Mm -hmm. So particularly with the whole dream, I love thing. If I pursue my dreams mm -hmm. and I'm consistent with it, then things are going to work out because it has to. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not going to stress the little things. I'm going to figure a way to make those things work out because there has to be a way. There you go. If there's a problem, there's a solution. There you go. So, yeah. You know, um, I was uh, talking with my priest actually, bring her up again, just the other day. Um, like Daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> I um, had to do something to do with, with the, my podcast, but I was saying how, you know, I want people to understand, like, my whole life I always ask that question, you know, somebody is making it out there as a professional dancer, yeah. as a professional violin player, um, soccer player, whatever, right? Um, how did they do it and why not me? Yeah. And, I'm, you know, and I realized, like, there's probably tons of people who are asking themselves that same question and they don't know how to answer it. And so I'm like, well, why not? And so I kind of been on this quest of getting people to answer it yeah. and like interviewing people like yourself who are just <laughs> putting one foot in front of the other and doing it. Yeah. When you were, you know, growing up in, you know, your neighborhood and family and life that you lived and was, was there anybody else around you who had that dreaming out loud mindset or did you, is, are you, did you have to kind of break into that on your own? Was that inspired by anything or like anybody in your immediate environment? I would, um... I want to say not yes and no. Like, you know how every young black kid goes to that phase of wanting to be a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the immediate yeah. flashbacks would just smack me in the face. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You know, so at that to that extent, cause every kid. Is like, oh, by the way, yeah. uh, my brother Gerard, you're lucky I'm not sharing stories right now. <laughs> uh, do it, do it. You know, you know, you know, you know. Life is about stories. Right? If he was here, I'd, I'd make him share, but you go ahead. You go ahead. I'm not going to be that embarrassing to do it. So, but like, you know, you, you, so you hang out with, at that most, you can believe, you can see yourself out of reality and be like, oh yeah, we can be rappers. And then 
at some point you snap back to reality. It's like, nah, that's not. <laughs> what the hell was I thinking? I thought I was coming all right. But you, know, <laughs> but, you know, like, so outside of that, nah, at that point, it became, when I started, especially when I started um, really, like, pursuing it, it was, nah, there was no one else around. So it felt, a lot of times, I felt like I was drowning. And I was like, I don't, you know, mm -hmm. should I really keep doing this? Mm -hmm. And then you start putting yourself in the art scene more, and, like, people started looking up to me, mm. and it's like it started being weird. It's like people around you or people in the art scene, yeah. People around me in the art scene mm. started looking because it's like to them, because like now, like I'm just doing it because it's just straight, I have to do this, mm -hmm. right? It's becoming a session, and now it's like I just now things the ball is rolling, and I'm, I got a taste of it. I was like, mm -hmm. I have to keep pushing and pursuing this. I want to see where it goes. I don't mm -hmm. know where it goes, but I just want to see where it goes. And for outside looking in, people are looking at it like. Oh shit, this person is doing it. Mm -hmm. like, I was like, can I curse? I'm sorry. They totally curse. Okay. <laughs> you say whatever you want. Oh, because I was like, oh Fuck. shit. See? Yeah. <laughs> whatever you want. Because I curse a lot. Okay. Fuck is up. I curse a lot. This is not a no curse free zone. I mean, we're adults. <laughs> what was I saying? Uh, we were talking about your environment. And oh, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, when that you were the only one. Cause, and, like, and honestly, because, like, alright, so. Yeah, I put it into the fact I'm black mm -hmm. and I'm making art. We're not taught as kids or in general growing up that there's black artists. This, this yeah. shit is still new to me when I see new other black artists. Like, whoa. Like, I know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, we we're, were allowed to do this? Like, yeah, 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 we, there was yeah. a whole bunch of us. And yeah. we the Paris. It was like, yeah. I'm like, you know what I mean? So it's, so it's all foreign. It's like, uh -huh. it's just foreign. So, but when you start seeing a little success, then like everyone else is seeing it and they're looking at it like, yeah, yeah. You, you're doing it. Yeah. So they start looking up to you and it's like, oh, I can't stop now. But you know what's, what I think is interesting is like, you know, when you talk about the black community, the type of people who are typically put out as shown as successes, like, you know, you think of musicians and you think athletes. Yeah. And those are both things that you still have to work really hard to get there, you yeah. know. But we don't think of it as being like this completely unattainable thing because that's what we're told is attainable. Yeah. So if someone is say, you know, says, I want to be an artist, you're like, uh, how do you do that? But here you are proving <laughs> you, you, can you can just, just do, do it. it. Yeah. yeah. yeah you can just do it. It's, I guess it's that whole, you know, uh, if you want to hide something from people, you just put it in plain sight or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's really like people... They'll say it all the time, like, so how do you get art supplies? They're like, four art stores around the corner. I walk into I, the store, I, really I give them the money. Wall. I was like, good, I want that canvas, I want to see how it works. And, da -da. and like, but like, well, you never went to art school, yeah, when YouTube exists. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So, like, I found out, like, because, for instance, I love painting with oil paint. Mm -hmm. At first, the only reason I did it because I heard that that's what real artists use, and I didn't know that you're supposed to be intimidated by it. Whatever, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna use oil paint. I did not know, which is stupid, because realistically, you don't mix oil with water. But <laughs> <laughs> I did not know because I was naive as hell that you can't. You know, that doesn't work well. So I'm like, all right, it's got to be a way to how do you use this oil stuff? And I just YouTube. Yeah. And some guys like, oh, oil thinner, and I'm like, oh, okay. And oh. I started playing with it to the extent that. It like to the untrained, like to the trained eye, my oil paints look like acrylic. Like they're always like, is this mm -hmm. acrylic paint? It's like, oh, it's oil paint. It's just I watered it down. How do you do this technique? Because I just started doing stuff. Yeah, and, playing um, around. Yeah, so it's like everything is attainable. It's just a matter of just doing it and just being willing to, you know, find out, find the answers. Do you think the fact that you haven't had formal training is an asset? It sounds yeah. like, because I, I feel like from when listening to you talk, it feels like. It's kept your imagination open. Yeah, because I what I've learned because I have friends who like gone fully to art schools, or I meet artists that have gone to you know the universities and got their doctors and all that stuff, and they're like, it, art school kind of teaches you like what it does is they teach you the basics to break you down, like mm -hmm. they teach you how to be creative, and then they strip that away from you, so you can't like really use your mind. I think that's why 80% of art students quit after mm -hmm. they graduate because like now that thing that made them creative that made them just want to make art mm -hmm. it doesn't exist anymore because mm -hmm. now you're just thinking about it on an academic level mm -hmm. like everything has Technique to be and stuff. Yeah versus I'm just painting because I want to paint. Mm -hmm. and it's like I have no clue why this line is going this way or why this color is here or why you know, it's just throwing mm -hmm. off emotion. And yeah. People, I, what they're attracted to, what they're attracted to is emotion. Mm -hmm. They're like, because when you look at the art, it's not 
I don't even think it's the aesthetics of it. I don't even think it's the drawing itself. I think you're really drawn to the emotion of it. Mm -hmm. And like I see people where I painted something and I felt it completely, because I might have broken up with a girl. Mm -hmm. But the painting looks like I'm, it's happy as hell. Mm -hmm. But people still feel that energy of, like they talk about relationships, I'm like, how do you, you know, I don't prefer but Yeah, like, how yeah, you, you know, how are you pulling that out? I didn't know I put it in there. Yeah. <laughs> But it's emotions, so yeah, that's what yeah. people are really attracted to. So it's like, yeah, so I think me being um, self-trained, it's just I've been able to keep that rawness, but because mm -hmm. I paint so much, I learned how to, like, you know, get better with, like, practice. It's mm -hmm. like making a county hall. So, like, my technique has gotten better and better because I kept doing it to the extent that it's just, you know, yeah. it becomes, like, it's natural. Yeah. You found your own voice in, yeah. in your painting. And like, you thought it's I, always been distinctive, but it used to uh, bother me though. Like, what do you mean? Very early, early on, it wasn't until I read this quote by Matisse, but like early on, because it, it was always distinct, and I felt like because I didn't, I wasn't taught or anything. Oh, uh, you like, felt like distinct meant, but ah. yeah, it was like everybody like, would say that. I'm like, Ugh. and like, I walk in the gallery, <laughs> and like, art was all kind of even like the most like maybe completely different pieces, but they all look somewhat alike, and their minds would just like stick out like a sore thumb, and I was like, ooh, I know. Puts me in this room, and I can't remember the quote particularly, but Henry Matisse said something to the extent that he used to always feel like he didn't belong because his art would stand out mm. like that until he realized that's the point. Mm -hmm. Like you want to stand out. You know, hearing about something standing out and about emotion, I, I want to tell you the story. Um, gosh, maybe almost a year ago now, there was like an art thing out show in Delray, and um, you know, one of the street shows. And I was just walking through, and I was by myself. I just had a hair appointment or something down there, so I was just like, oh, I'll walk through, you know. Mm -hmm. And there was this booth, and I can't remember the artist's name, it's, and, oh, I, <laughs> but I'll have to tell you later. But it, the painting was called, like, the cathedral or something like that. But it was had all this, um, like, old Hebrew lettering in it and just beautiful scrolls of things. But... You know, no more beautiful or less beautiful than anything else in that booth. But yeah. that painting, I couldn't it's step away it. from yeah. for almost an hour. And I thought, oh, I'll stroke through. No, no, no. I got <laughs> stuck. Yeah. Totally stuck. And just the tears were flowing. It just affected me. And it's amazing how that can happen. And, you know, so for you to be able to do what you do and yeah. ha see someone having a you know a response is ah that's so I guess, cool <laughs> i had that moment actually yeah like, about two years ago for the first time with looking at someone else's art mm. um, this is artist his name is carl craig he's based out of miami he's an asian artist mm -hmm. i think i recognize was, the name yeah and it was doing um this uh black art exhibit that was in called african diaspora mm. at the armory and I had I was just walking around looking at all the artwork. Cause I had I didn't come to the opening because I had you know it was like a little after my father passed, so I was okay. out and about, and I had another show that day, so I was like it's not gonna go to nobody's show. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, that's where those people who were mad at me for not going to both those shows. <laughs> <laughs> there are reasons. Stuff. There are reasons. There are reasons. Now it's like who you feel like nothing you personal. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no. So I couldn't make. So I got to go to, and which is a great thing because. Since I got to go the next day and no one was there, I got to like really look at the art. Mm -hmm. And I come around the corner, and it's this huge long panel of like the aftermath of earthquakes in Haiti. Mm -hmm. And, it's, and like, it was just like, just it, I was stuck. I was mm -hmm. stuck. I was just sitting there, just like. Was it photographs or no, was it? No, it was it? a painting. It was an oh, oil wow. painting, and it was like so long. Like it was just this really long to the whole wall. Wow. And it was like it started off with the people, and then. You start seeing the rubble, the palace was destroyed, and like oh some bodies, goodness. and it was just like, I was just stuck. Yeah. And it was like, that was for me, it was the first time ever having a painting do that to me. And I was yeah. like, okay, I, I really get it. Because I started getting emotional, and it wasn't until I started hearing voices of the people coming around the corner, I was like, oh, man up, man up. By the way, by the way. Look at it, Allergies, allergies. Allergies, that's all. It's cool, man. <laughs> Well, you know, a fly, you got my uh, fly. You know, fly, like, what, you know, yeah, the most random thing. I don't know. I don't know. It happens, man. It's, it's so random that it's possibly true. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's like, yeah, All right. Uh, they've gotten close to me before. I guess yeah, it's possible. Why else would he be crying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh my gosh! So you skated by something real fast. I do that sometimes. You went to Paris. <laughs> 
Did I go to Did you, go, you, you said you went to... You, nah. uh, I thought you said something about um, a group of black guys. Oh, yeah. I was, yeah, there was, was a lot of... Because um, I did a lot of... After I started really getting into art, I was like, I, I want to find out who's other black artists. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot of the Harlem Renaissance artists, like particularly one named August... Um, August Savage. Mm -hmm. She's she's actually from West Palm Beach. Mm -hmm. And she's a famous sculptor. One of her sculptures are, is in the Norman. But a lot of famous black artists just said, because of Paris had this thing where if you were an artist, you were an artist. You weren't labeled a black artist. And we're talking during the time of Harlem Renaissance, so mm -hmm. America is, you know, America. Mm -hmm. So they bypassed going to New York and they all went to Paris, got their credentials, and then went to New York. And you could have denied they were artists. And yeah, so I was like, that oh that really made me go, I wanna go to Paris. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I haven't gone yet, but I was like, I wanna go to you Paris. You really wanna go. Yeah, like this this Burning urge is like I have to go. To Interesting. Paris. Yeah. Well, if you go, when you go, <laughs> when you go, um, I recommend not only going to see the Louvre, yeah, but also going to um, Versailles. Versailles. Because Versailles has some amazing artwork in there too. Yeah. So I highly recommend both. See, this is probably why I haven't gone yet. I'm supposed to know these things. <laughs> or just, you know, take me with you and yeah, we'll solve the problem. I'll French. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, it's probably better than mine. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's okay. We can work together. English. I already speak English then, anyway. Yeah. Not really, yeah. oh, but... Okay. Yeah, you were talking to me. Alright, so, if you're listening and you want to go and you know French and English very well... You'll be our third. Join the team. Yeah. <laughs> Make this easy for us. For <laughs> so real. We just, we just want to enjoy. Oh yeah. my God. No, I've had two trips to Paris. One was horrific and one was awesome. I want to know what the horrific one <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll make it, I'll make it, I'll, I'll try to make it short and sweet, but. Um, Did you end up in a hospital? No, a hospital. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> So zero to a hundred. Like, was this the first trip? Yes. <laughs> oh, and you went back? Okay. Well, yeah, well I went. I was there to. Uh, it was the summer between my uh, junior and senior year of school. Yeah. And um, I went there to study abroad for part of the business school, and it was like two weeks in in uh, Madrid and two weeks in Paris. Yeah. And like the second week in Madrid, I started getting really sick. I had accidentally eaten some raw chicken, so I thought it was that, but I didn't know that... Wait, you, know, you accidentally ate raw chicken? I was in the cafeteria, <laughs> and clearly I'm a chatterbox, and so I wasn't paying attention while I was eating, I like you don't and it was like six, six, six bites into it, I looked down, I'm like, ooh, that's why it, it feels weird. <laughs> yeah. right. So I thought it was food poisoning, you know? Yeah. But I didn't know that food poisoning only lasts like 24 hours or so. Like, so on like the fifth day of not being able to eat and yeah. <laughs> basically not being able to leave the bathroom, like this is something else. I think past the second day. Right. <laughs> I literally all I, all I could eat, all I could have was the um, the uh, broth from French onion soup. Was yeah. the only thing I could like. Well, I wasn't even in Paris yet. Sorry, this is still in Madrid. But anyways, um, so then we went to Paris and the second. First night there, second night there, I just I was in these other girls' room hanging out, and I just doubled over pain. They're like, "We're taking the hospital now," and it'd be my appendix. Oh wow! Yeah, so did that you was your appendix taken out. I like... did. So <laughs> it was. I know. So it was. That was a Sunday. Um, so my my surgery was scheduled for. T I can't make this stuff up. Just like your fly. No. <laughs> my surgery was scheduled for Tuesday morning. So fly was real. So yeah, I know. <laughs> so I had the surgery and they did it laparoscopically, which uh, for anyone listening who's not familiar means instead of make one big incision, they poke a couple holes in yeah. you and say, you know, basically send the suction in one way, laser in the other way. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, in order to have room to work, they pump you full of CO2. Yeah. So after the surgery's over, they're supposed to deflate you. <laughs> and they do not I do have, that with me. I'm a very visual person. Yeah. So I do picture you as a balloon, <laughs> like a balloon right now. Like, it's like it's with a pump, a tire pump. Yeah. It's like, wow. Just take, take the needle. And just, like and now you're floating all. Right. And now everybody's listening sees it too. <laughs> so it's good. Awesome. You're welcome. Yeah. yeah, so so I woke up looking like I was like five or six months pregnant and I was in a lot of pain. This is wild. Like, and they kept giving me um 
Is it Tums? The, the... Yeah, I don't like, this isn't doing anything. And meanwhile, uh, the night nurse is yelling at me because I don't speak French. And I'm just, uh-huh. even the, but I have my last name. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, I'm in a lot of pain. It's kind of hard. No, side note, that thing <laughs> does work against you. You're like, you know? Like, you know? For real? And so, do you know how many times people make fun of me anyway? So, uh, you know, like I wasn't, I, it got so bad, I could barely breathe. And I, it would take me like half an hour just across the room to go to the bathroom and then a half hour back and the night nurse was when I say abusive like dragging me down the hall by nothing but bed sheets you know sh- showering me with the heart of, like Wait, water you all the way huh you were for real like, you uh, with the, uh, the water all the way on as hot as it could be as hard as it could be like it was awful so after a week I said screw this you guys aren't listening to me so I checked myself out and um The lady who was, like, in charge of us, like, our uh, chaperone or whatever, um, she started trying to get me a flight home. Well, the airlines were on strike. Oh, wow. (laughs) And I can think that I had the strings. So I I got stuck in Paris in in a hotel by myself because I don't remember how I ended up by myself, but I was by myself. And, um... It was just awful, and so finally I get, I get, I fly home. Like they did the whole thing where they wheeled me to to and from the, yeah, cause the whole thing. Yeah, have to. Oh my god. Hospitals have to do that. <laughs> so, like, so um, my finger or not, still we gotta roll you out. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, like I, when I was in Paris, like I didn't get to see anything. The concierge <laughs> downstairs told me about like uh, one of those. Um, like a car service that'll basically drive around Paris and tell you about everything, so at least you could see it. So I did oh. that, but that was it. Like <laughs> other than that, what was that like? <laughs> it was annoying because everybody else in the van could walk, and so we would get places that they would go and run and take close pictures with the Eiffel Tower, and I'd be like, "Yeah, click from the passenger seat of the freaking car." <laughs> it was so lame, but whatever. So I get, you know, I I fly home, and um, and my parents came to pick me up, and. I had lost so much weight because I'd barely eaten for two, three weeks. Yeah, so after they deflated you. Yeah, so. <laughs> right, right. I was talking about flying around the room and I barely ate anything. So my parents didn't even recognize me when I was like, yeah, when I was that. wheeled out. Yeah, and they were across and they, they were like scanning the crowd looking for me. And finally, like I, could, I couldn't even speak at that point, but it yeah. took everything I had and I like, pushed myself with the wheelchair and I was like, Johnny Carter, I'm there. My dad, I've never seen him move. Well, one other time I've seen him move that fast. That's when someone called my me the end where my brother he had to stop my brother from killing him but other than that <laughs> I've never seen my dad move that fast and uh, he you know scooped me up and everything I went to the doctor the next morning she took a chest x-ray she's like you need to go to the doctor the hospital yeah, now no kind of good. <laughs> it was awful I think it was in the hospital for another week physical therapy bed rest for two weeks physical therapy for like six months and it's never been the same and you went back Yes. I want like, so much beef. I'm like, like yo, every You know what though? You know what? <laughs> there was one nurse who was the only <laughs> thing that kept me going. She was awesome and I I really wanted to thank her. And yeah. so I was able to actually do that on her very last night is when we happened to be, show up. She was just by coincidence yeah. show up on her very last night and I got to thank her, so that was awesome. Did you so. know that she was the one who orchestrated them? I know, right? <laughs> She's like, I wanted these flowers a yeah. year later, damn it. <laughs> that's my whole plan, bitches. That is such a fun story. <laughs> like, well, that's, <laughs> so anybody who listens to the podcast and hears yeah. me cough from time to time, yeah. blame Paris. Fucking Paris, man. <laughs> like, I kind of like, don't know if I want to go now. Oh, you do want to go. I'm telling you, because the second time I went, it was awesome. I don't know how you made it to the second time. I'd be like, I don't know. Fuck them. Like, they are no fly zone. Like, I know. <laughs> no, the second time was a lot better. I promise yeah. you. Like, all the same way. <laughs> second time was a lot better. So, <laughs> see, excuse me. <clears throat> Another thing that you skated by real quick was that you had been in BuzzFeed. Oh, yeah. That, what was that? <laughs> I love BuzzFeed. Man, that was very strange. It was, uh, the whole setting of that night. It, these moments feel like movies. Yeah. And it's like, I swear, if it wasn't for the fact that I can look back and, like, yeah, it actually happened, it'd be like, nah, it didn't happen. <laughs> but we're at, um, Eric Goodis had, a, I think, an album release or something in Propaganda in Lake Worth. So we're there, and it was the night where the, um, they were about to read the verdict of whether Zimmerman was guilty or not. Mm. Like, a year prior, I had did, like, this painting, two paintings, I think, inspired by a Cherry Long Morning mm-hmm. situation. I did this one painting called Hoodie Paint, so it was like, these two black boys in hoodies and they were in tears and I was mm. frustrated. And this was something that I posted and like I, I never thought of it. And um, that night, 
I think uh, it was like minutes before the night comes out, my phone is going crazy. I'm like, what the hell's wrong with my phone? So I look at it, and, <laughs> and like people are sending me messages like, yo, do you know you're on BuzzFeed? I'm like, what are you talking no about? No way. And there's this list that they had of like the top 25 artworks um, inspired by or dedicated to Trayvon Martin. No kidding. Number one was Sheriff Ferry, who was like the Obey, the big art guy. Number five was me. No and I was kidding. like, holy shit. But I felt wow. like, in the moment, I was like that, right? Yeah. And then, the next thing we hear is the verdict that you're uh, right? So now I have this conflicted feeling. Right. Like, why am I celebrating this? Because the pain was about this kid, you know, dying and he doesn't get no kind of justice. And it's like, yeah. yeah, it literally fucked me up for a while. It wasn't until my friend DJ Minnis, like, put in perspective, like, you're supposed to make that kind of art because that's what you do. This is what you speak and all the benefits that come with it. Mm -hmm. That's, it's just part of the game. But as long as you make it because you're speaking, that's what matters. If it gets, you know, the attention, it got the attention because the message. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but like, so it was a conflicting one. Now I look back at it and I'm like, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Like in that moment, it was one of those moments that made me go. Like, well, I think that's your gift. You're able to take these big, shattering moments for a lot of people and, and kind of boil them down to an essence. It's uh, it's a catch twenty two. Mm -hmm. Like one of the last year was one of the moments where I realized how hard it was because that at, during that whole summer we had summer where it seemed like every day somebody was getting shot yes. by the police. I had made this painting in Texas, it's one that's rolled up over there, mm -hmm. um, where like it was it's brick walls and like rubber was breaking out of the walls and the government like it was just commentary of what was happening. Mm -hmm. And every brick on the wall, I wrote names of you know people who were suffering injustice and whatnot. And mm -hmm. I feel like every day I had to add two or three mm -hmm. names. It became so daunting. Right. Because it's like, it's a living memorial. Right. And every day I'm adding names. And it's like, damn, does no one see how fucked up this wow. world is? And so it, it's like, on one end, like for people, when I, when I paint these things, it's like, thank you, because you know, my voice or you know it's just me really just stressing you know as an artist you're supposed to talk about what's happening mm -hmm. but at the same time it takes such a huge toll because it's like you're realizing the things that you're painting is it's painful reality real like lies, you yeah. have to feel a way about it or to paint it and then you'll have people who come at you for speaking about it yeah. and it's like this is my reality. Yeah. How you you know like how can you make me feel negative about speaking about? What's I'm, I'm curious. What are some of the negativities? Is it the people who are on the other side thinking? Yeah, it was that a lot he, of, someone deserved it or someone deserved that. Yeah, or it's like oh you're painting everybody in a negative. Ironically, say that, but like you're yeah. painting police in a negative image. And yeah. Like, it's like, but if I'm waking up every morning and mm -hmm. the thing I'm seeing is these people, these men who look just like me. Yes. Like half of them. Like I'm thinking them. you being on the side of the road that day, if it had been someone else you know, instead like, of a good Samaritan. I'm notorious for just going for walks. Yeah. Right. And like, I, you know, it, it easily could be me. Mm -hmm. It very easily. And I see it as mm -hmm. that. So it's like, how am I not supposed to feel? And it's not, and it's not that, you know, we at all believe that every cop is bad. There's nothing, it nothing like, it I think good. what cops do on a daily basis, I think it's heroic. Yeah. I think it's amazing. I, I mean, I know I would have a hard time kissing my husband goodbye every day or my, you know, my kid goodbye on their first day. Like I would have a hard time because it's serious and it's dangerous. But at the same time, like there's so many, so many elements of the infrastructure involved that are geared towards screwing it to the black man, screwing it to them, and it's and it's and that needs to change. Yeah. It needs to change. The fact that someone can, that something can happen, with as much clear evidence as can be seen on videotape, and not even so much as an indictment, blows my mind. Yeah. Like at least give it a day in court. Give it a day at in least. court. At, at least. least. Don't use the same amount of scrutiny you would for a trial. It's not a trial. Yeah. It, it, you know, but don't then, get me started. <laughs> yeah, but, and then you have to take it to the uh, uh, once that person, like, the person is dead and trial doesn't happen. The person who's dead goes on trial. Yes. And yes. It becomes about what did they mean when they were, you know, putting yeah. up middle fingers in their webcam. Yeah, uh, just like what any other 15 year old yeah, or 16 year old means when they put up fingers in a webcam. Like, like, oh, you want a parking ticket. 
Yeah. Or that's the best you can find. Right. Or you start floating around pictures of someone else, else and then like, claiming it's him. And then everybody gets caught up believing it's him. Oh God, it's disgusting. Like, so, and I can only imagine what the families are going yeah. through. But then that also had an effect on my artwork on a different level because then it was like I, I kind of slowed down with painting those things, and I was like I have to come back this a different way. So like you know my artwork. It is black art. Like I'm painting mm-hmm. black people. It's mm-hmm. just you know, it's just just so having most of the time they're colorful or whatever. Or they don't have faces. So I like I made the conscious decision that all right, I'm gonna actually use black skin on the figures. Mm-hmm. And the cool thing, like particularly the one that's behind you, uh, when I was painting it wow. at the time I was painting it, it was outside because I paint outside a lot. And mm-hmm. these, these little girls one day we seen them while we're in here. They were like sitting outside looking. Just to describe it, it's it's a beautiful painting of this woman, black woman, afro, with, 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 <laughs> with the most beautiful, colorful dress, with a gorgeous, I mean, just brilliantly colorized background. It's, it's gorgeous. Thank you. Gorgeous. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, okay. can't, holding the world in her hand, yeah, by the way. Graduated. Like, because during the time... Oh, I, yeah! A lot of my friends were graduating. Oh, yeah! Um, a lot of my female friends were graduating. I kept seeing on Instagram, so it... I like I sketched this image during that time frame uh, on the canvas. When you so, say gra- now that you pointed that out, it means a hundred percent more. Yeah, right. Yeah. It really does. Yeah, it hits a little. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Cause it's like wow. But so I was painting this outside. We I was I think midway done with painting it, mm-hmm. and um we had noticed these little girls out there. So we went outside, and they're like. Oh my God, we love the painting, and you know we really love your art. And I can see that they were looking at because there's usually a lot of art in here, mm-hmm. like, so I can tell that they're looking and they want to look inside. So I go grab Jessica, I have her, you know, talk to them. So she takes them on the tour, and we give them prints. And it to me, it was like in that moment I started realizing that, like, you know, like because I paint out there a lot, and I talk to the people who are always around. They, you know, they're always commenting. But it wasn't until that moment I really started realizing what it meant when I'm painting out there to everybody and like mm-hmm. the kids and how they see it like for them to see this image mm-hmm. and them to relate themselves to what it was like okay you know what it's it's different it's like i have this is you know the purpose when i'm speaking when i'm making art i'm speaking for these people mm-hmm. but i'm also giving them something to look forward to just mm-hmm. like ironically enough when we were watching good times as kids and we seen those yeah movies, yes it's like uh, yes. you know, it's like the thing that no one ever thinks about is while basquiat is considered you know the black artist mm-hmm. JJ was to us really the first black artist. Mm-hmm. That was the guy that we seen on TV who was making art. And it was yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shit, yes. we could do this. Yeah, oh, yeah. Crap. What? Yeah. So you know, but it was these positive images that you were seeing by these other black artists like Ernie Barnes who was really doing those paintings, and it was like it it, it stays in people's heads. And now when I, people see my artwork, they're like, oh man, you give me that feeling of when I was watching Good Times, and it's like, oh. <laughs> and this is so a whole lot of irony with that on you know, another level. But it's like. So it's I'm giving that feeling back, and yeah. it's like, it matters. And so it's like I wanted to make sure when I make the art that they see themselves for real. It's like I do not want you to deny like this is you. This is about you. Good, bad, happy, sad. This is you. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's nice to allow the next generation to see various images. Yeah, that's great. How do you see yourself paying? I know paying it forward is important to you. From Everything I've I've seen. What what do you, how do you do that? Uh, let's see, um, time. I guess you know, yeah. like one of the things that I haven't done it in a while. One of the things that I used to do, I kind of stopped because like everybody went crazy over it, and it became it became like a, a egg hunt, I guess, or you know, a savage <laughs> hunt. It wasn't the intention. Like I used to do this thing, or like one day I was walking down the street, and I happened to have a painting on me, and I just left it on the corner, and I was like, let me just write something a little note on the back. Like, you know, if you happen to pick this up, this is yours. Hope you blessed or whatnot. And so I left it there and I would see people walk by and one person looks and picks it up and I was like, I just wanted to leave it for people that, you know, stop the smell of the roses. Because mm-hmm. like I happen I just stopped like I stargaze. Mm-hmm. So I stop and I smell the roses. I want people who just like kinda of stop and look at life and be like, What what is that there? And like, oh snap, I got a paint in. And like, <laughs> never meets you yeah, yeah but you know you got this thing and it's like i hope that you know it makes you you know just feel positive and you get that energy back and the craziest thing i've heard from people who like have gotten it 
that I'll get these emails and they'll hunt me down. Because the only thing I'll put on there is just like my signature and just the Jaffalo name, but not. And that's they'll it. find you. Yeah, they will find me and they'll send me emails. And Who messages. is Jaffalo? And they're like, oh my God, thank you. It's like, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and like the other things is like trying to always give opportunities for other artists. Mm-hmm. Like, because I know for myself, it was uh, this whole thing where I didn't have too many opportunities. The doors weren't open for me. Mm-hmm. I had to like always knock down doors. Mm-hmm. But it's not, you can't knock down a door mm-hmm. and not, you know, cause a path for somebody else. You just yeah. suddenly block that door up again. That's that's counteractive. So yeah. I try to like, for instance, I just started doing the Exhibit Trill, which is these group exhibits where I put other artists on, mm-hmm. like other young artists who don't get chances to, you know, be in galleries and whatnot and mm-hmm. give them opportunities. And I don't even have my art in it because wow. it's just... You know, you want to get them. It's about them. Yeah, so. How did you knock down doors when you were just getting started? Uh, did, what did the, you do? One of the key things was um, me and Daniel Fortune, like he was doing conflict runs. At Fortune! Yeah. We started after, I haven't seen him in a while, too. He's doing good, too. I didn't kick it with him. He's got the reason I have golf clubs. <laughs> I, I can know. only imagine. Yeah. Oh my god, like if you golf clubs, these. please bring me along so I can videotape. Them. Yeah. Like, you know, watch how I'd be like amazingly good and everybody be like, ooh, yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, right? Who knew I could paint? Making some viral so, video. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Alright, wait. Let's, let's I just say it's live art. <laughs> this was planned for artistic reasons. And all of a sudden you gotta go, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, yeah, shout out to Daniel. So um we had we got into this art show in Fort Lauderdale and it was like our first time both being in a gallery type thing. Yeah. And, um, we liked the energy, we were like, man, why can't we do this at home? So we flipped the uh, um conflict rhyme shows and we started doing artificially dope and we started incorporating art in clubs and whatnot. Nice. And it'd be like, you know, so it'd be like urban art exhibit and it was like Artists weren't, they wouldn't give us a chance to be in no galleries because at the time no one knew who we were, so mm-hmm. no one was really trying to deal with us. And like, we were like, no. So, like, all right, we'll just make our own shows. Yeah. And like, it started causing like, people to pay more attention to us, and then I would take advantage of that. And, like, all right, there's an empty building, I'm gonna do my own solo show in here. Mm. And just keep pushing and seeing what happens, and you, you force people to pay attention to you. There you go. And so, yeah. So, that's basically what it was. It was just consistently, and like, I took real advantage of social media. Okay. Because, like, for artists, for any artist, but particularly a painter, mm-hmm. if you make art, social media is made for you. Because all mm. you want to do is look at pictures. It's anyway, true. Right? So it's like, if you take it in, it's like the process of just making a drawing, you take pictures, like, just making it. People want to see the outcome, they just want to look at it. Mm-hmm. No one wants to sit there and read, they want to look. So that just really just kept pushing, like, people to pay attention to me. They were just, like, consistently seeing the work because I paint so much. And it's, for me, it's an obsession. It's, yeah. just, it's just how I breathe. So, like, it's nothing I have to paint. But to everybody else, it's a spectacle. Like, damn, it's another one. Another one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Another one. So, yeah. Yeah, you, you know. sure them out. That's for sure. <laughs> where, can, where can people find you on social media? Uh, Let everybody know. Literally hunt down just by any Google with Joplo. I think I only have a Facebook, an Instagram, and a Twitter. Okay. And Tumblr? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Clearly, of, you use a lot. A lot of these things, a lot of them things is attached to one like app. That right, right. You, yeah, you send everything out. Yeah, through. so like, yeah, I yeah, just yeah. now started actually retweeting, like tweeting now. Okay. Where, like I have my spurts because I don't have a phone, so like, yeah. I only have a phone to as a tablet. Type gotcha, thing, gotcha, gotcha. And, yeah. So like I have spurts where so I'm randomly tweeting a whole bunch of stuff and then I disappear. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm back. Yeah, it's like gone. <laughs> I know it's gotten up people's nerves because, like, for the last year, like, it's just been, like, a year that I've had, had the phone, which has been awesome because artistically, it's let me mm. more focus on everything because, like... No distraction I, yeah, every five seconds, yeah. in the past, every other second, there was an alert or someone yeah. texting me or someone's trying to call me, and I'm like, I just want to paint. Yeah. Like, stop. I'm frustrated. And I, like, I can <laughs> just paint. You know what I mean? And it's like, you can tell, like, there's a this huge difference detailing or whatnot. And so, um, yeah, but I know it gets on people's nerves because they're like... Like, I can't get in contact. Tweet me. I, I'm going to see it. I'm down there eventually. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm, 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 I'm on Facebook. I, I get the alerts. I'll yeah, see yeah, it. Yeah. You know, I'm going to probably respond. If I don't respond, chances are, I apologize. I just didn't feel like responding. <laughs> like, yeah, I've seen it. Like, Duly worn now, everybody. Yeah, it's like, you know, I just snitched on myself. I'm kind of a dick. 
I was screening my phone calls when I had a phone. So well, like, if people can't find you on social media, where can they find you in real life? Where's the like? Where are you? Do you have uh, um, Do you have anything coming up as far as a show or anything? I like have that? something coming up. This thing. Um, I'm gonna be. This think, thing. Yeah. Tomorrow I actually have to go to the studio and do an outline for a huge mural that they're gonna be doing a community mural where they're gonna have people come out and fill it in. What's it called again? Yeah, it's uh, called the masterpiece. At Aeon Dance Studio, it's in Lake Park. Oh. The mattress is somewhere on that thing. Okay. <laughs> but so tomorrow I'm gonna go there, and do the spend the whole day and create the outline, and then everybody gets to fill in that nice. piece. Nice. On the Sunday, it's free. It's gonna be for the family. It's for the people. Come kick it. Fun. And yeah. Uh, That's fun. April 26th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at 523 10th Street Look in Lake Park, Florida 33403. A family fun day with food, live entertainment, painting, and more offering Whoa. free dance classes for kids under 12. What? The Masterpiece. What? See, that just happened. <laughs> uh, these I do like, what I can. Yeah. I do what I can. <laughs> these is like, well, this is how it happens. Like, I, I'll be like, I don't have anything planned. And then tomorrow, suddenly I have like 700 shows. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, like, for instance, last week, we just had a barbecue on the lawn for the community. Mm -hmm. And the reason to have a shout out to Erwin, like, it, kid you not, Two weeks prior, Erwin, who's a good friend of mine, he's also Asian, he's a poet and whatnot, we're just sitting outside talking, and he's like, we should do a, park, a barbecue for the community. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> Will happens to be walking by, I was like, Will, would you want a DJ if we did something like that? I'm like, yeah, sure, I can DJ in the room. I'm like, all right, cool. The next day, Erwin's like, I booked the bounce house. I'm like, yeah, what? Things <laughs> <laughs> just got real. Yeah, I was like, well, so we're really doing this? <laughs> and then, like, next thing you know, that sad is a bounce house for me. Wow. Um, Omar is out there, it's uh, James, he's got this huge go. like, barbecue thing in the everybody in the community. So, you know, it's just another thing, yeah. put one foot in front of the other, and yeah. just do it. Just, it, just do it. Just like, do it. Exhibit Trill, the first one that I did, I literally, I only, I did it as a response because a couple of my friends didn't get it to continue. Mm -hmm. And, the, you know, um, that Saturday, I think, coming up, because it was like Art Week, Northwood is getting highlighted, and the Lot 23 building was empty, and I was like, oh, well. Because I know how to do a pop up show. Yeah. <laughs> you guys aren't in the show. Like, I put you guys in the show and then boom. Like, all right, here we go. And it was just a response to that. And it turned into this two day pop up that turned wow. into a full on exhibit and had a closing. And Are you serious? Like exhibit. Like, yeah. That's but it's crazy. just a matter of just do it. You have a, like, hanging out with a bossy and Jessica mm -hmm. gives you the mindset that you have to do it. Mm -hmm. Because they literally, they do it. Like, yeah. Jessica created a play in this living room. Like a choreo one, literally with her head and like piece things together that it debuted at the improv and it was at the Mozart. And like, it's you know, amazing. Right? And like, these are people I have to encounter every day. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Like, what I a can't. great environment. Yeah, it's, oh my God. That catch me too. It's like, yeah, that was totally dope. Nah, I have to do something. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like, uh, honestly, one day, like, there was this painting that it's not up right now, it's down somewhere. But, um, mm -hmm. The, re the only reason that I painted it, it actually started from that. The only reason that I did that was because the boss was sitting in here, and I thought he was writing a song. Mm -hmm. I was like, so you're just going to sit here and write a song? <laughs> and he didn't confirm or deny that he did. So I decided to sketch this little thing on that canvas and mm -hmm. see Jessica do something on the bar. And so... So the three of you just be an art artistic yeah, artist? Yeah. Because I out. did that, he actually writes a song. That's so amazing. I decided to make the full on actual real pen. That's amazing. Uh, Jessica paints that. And it's like, That's amazing. But these are the, right? So oh my like, gosh. I, I just want to be on a fly of the wall <laughs> all the time and just absorb. But then it gets worse because then everybody who comes here is an artist. So <laughs> there are always little art things like Turtles here. He's doing some dope art thing. And like it's like, ah, so I got these other people that I live with now. That's so awesome. now I live around the people who live that mindset of wow. you know, being artists. So you're forced to consistently make mm -hmm, art, mm -hmm. and so could be worse. Yeah, could be it worse. could be worse. <laughs> so it's like, I love it, and it's like sometimes it's like there's no break because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> somebody's doing something, yeah. and so it, you know it's dope. I love it. That's it awesome. Couldn't get no better. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you want to close out the podcast? You want to sign uh, it off, and all sure. you? How do we sign up? Do I have to do something special? Do do <laughs> However, you want to say your name, because I know there are a few different ways that you have uh, you, you say it, and then I you say like it with curve the cube. Comic kind of book reference again. It's like Rasha Abdul or Raza Abdul. No one knows how to say it, so I never confirm it. Okay, so um, if you just well, I'll say how my mom says it. My okay, mom goes Jafle, so it's Jafle. So the official way is she literally. It was the funniest thing, like. 
when, it, when one of the first articles came out about me, my cousin was like, how do you even pronounce it? And my mom was like, Zaple. I was like, yeah, All right. that's what it is. <laughs> mama says, <laughs> mama goes. Yeah, everybody else goes, it's J-Flo, J-Flo, j it's, it, it's not, If you know the refer to me as it, that means that it means something. Uh-huh. It. So I was like, hey, yeah. But didn't you course, didn't you make it into an acronym for something? Yeah, Justice always finds light eventually. Uh, I love it. Yeah, shout out to KRS One. He was one of my favorite rappers. Yeah, so I like I like that he had an acronym because like names have to mean something. Mm-hmm. So like all right, and it makes sense, especially with the art that I made. So yeah, that's great. Okay, yeah. sign off. Just what? say peace. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, do you want to sign my guest book? Yeah, it's you um. <laughs> oh, that's true. I did. Yeah, it's like it, I'm gonna um, eventually once it's full. Oh, we should offer charity. Cover. Thank you. It was between this and Legos. The only reason I ah I love Legos, but and the cool thing is it had like a little plate on it that you yeah. could actually build on. It was pretty dope. But I opted for the for the cassette player. Oh, you know, one question I did want to ask you, um, and we're still recording, so it works. Oh, what? Um, what? I thought we were off the record now. <laughs> <laughs> um. Where do you where do you see yourself fitting into the history of Haitian art? Ah, that's a good question. Well, thank you. I tried. I thought about yeah, it all by right. myself. <laughs> Hot twist. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I don't know. I, I, it's all new to me. I, I know I I got the ultimate advantage because I'm a Haitian artist, and mm-hmm. I, and on top of it, I'm a Haitian American artist. So it's like this little twist to like, ooh, he has this. Haitian style, but the American, like native. Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? There it is. But I don't, I don't know. Like I want to, I don't know. <laughs> as, as long as, like when Haitians like look at art and they go like, yeah, he was one of us. Mm-hmm. And like you know, he really represented his work. You know, if they they feel proud to know as part of that lineage, that's what matters. Other than that, I don't know. I just you know I make I want to make them proud because that's why I started making art. Yeah. So every time I paint, like it's literally honoring all the ancestors that died that day because I got so much energy. Mm-hmm. Someone's energy came to me and made me become an artist. Mm-hmm. So I have to continuously represent that. So. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> High five. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> You're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesomer. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah, it's just awesome. See, it's just awesome. Kind of work. I can't find it. Everything is awesome. I think that works. <laughs> You have successfully curved the cube.